You're with Johnny Vedmore on today's News Talk TNT. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. We've talked a fair few times now over the past year, and I, I just, I, we, I, you've got such great energy, so I always like speaking with you. Um, you're, cur- you're currently investigating the ideology of major international bodies such as the UN. What can you Correct. tell people about the weird religious aspects of the United Nations? So it is definitely weird indeed. I, I think we could argue that it's actually a cultist. Um, I think that that would be a fair assessment. So the many people may know that the consulting uh, spiritual body of the UN is called Lucius Trust. And this is the brainchild of Alice Bailey. Alice Bailey is, of course, the disciple of Madame Blavatsky. And she is the one who founded the Theosophical Society in 1875. And Theosophy, she's, you know, kind of uh, credited with popularizing the New Age movement. She certainly didn't create it. She certainly didn't create Theosophy. I would argue that it goes all the way back to maybe the Neoplatonists. I would even add maybe the ancient mystery schools. Uh, So, you know, it's not new, but she definitely popularized it. And her disciple, Alice Bailey, created the Lucius Trust. It was originally called Lucifer Publishing. And actually, if you go to the website, they they admit this, but they claim that it's not the same Lucifer. However, uh, of their own words, they do say that it it is the, the angel Lucifer. Many people would think that that angel, the, the fallen angel, is uh, Lucifer, Satan, the light bearer. But they claim that that is not the same Lucifer somehow. Um, but it very much seems like it is. But they changed the name. I think it was two years later. It was a little too on the nose for people. So they changed it to Lucius Trust. However, it is the spiritual underpinnings. They say right on the website that it is the you know, consultancy for the UN. And I would argue that the UN, you know, people think that it's a organization for peace. It's an organization to, uh, you know, ne- navigate and negotiate uh, conflicts between nation states. However, I think really what it is designed to do is to create this one world religion. And theosophy is very convenient for ushering that in because it is a very inclusive religion. You know, they say they accept all religions uh, with the exception of Christianity, conveniently. So they they don't specifically say this, but if you look at the writings of Madame Blavatsky herself, she says that Christianity is diametrically opposed to uh, theosophy. So Wow, that's pretty big, isn't it? To choose something that's opposed to God. And, uh, and, you (laughs) know, they they, they based it on good lucifer not bad lucifer, good lucifer <laughs> the, the light bearer yes yeah. uh, one might uh, say the the false light uh but yes the, it is they believe he is the light bearer and there's there's a lot of evidence to indicate that this is what they are trying to do they're trying to usher in this one world religion many of the players and it's very very relevant now because the new age movement has kind of morphed as it typically does right so now we have what is called the new thought religion uh there and these are people who are uh, they they believe in conscious evolution i i've done several shows on this now and they they show this spiral uh people like Mar- uh barbara marks hubbard will talk about co-creating and they show this spiral which looks a lot like the hegelian dialectic and for for those people who may not be so familiar with the hegelian dialectic uh the really important thing just to understand is that hegel believed that the state equal God. And he actually believed that human beings could have no freedom without complete subservience to the state. And if you look at this spiral that he talks about and the spiral that they're talking about, it really looks like Jacob's Ladder, which I think is a Gnostic Jacob's Ladder because they believe theosophy actually means divine wisdom. And they believe through theurgy, which is the divine work, that they could achieve gnosis that would make essentially turn them into gods and that they could talk to these ascendant masters who they channel uh people like alice bailey wrote 24 uh pieces of work that she claimed were channeled through dk uh joel cool uh and then it was a uh, I, I, kumi something i i 
always mispronounce the name, but uh, who Madame Blavatsky channeled. And actually, the soft, uh, sorry, the uh, Society for Psychical Research determined that she was a fraud because it just got so absurd with all of these, you know, ascendant masters that were that she was channeling and all of these, uh, you know, creations that were supposedly, uh, you know, handed down through these channeling events. But they made it very convenient. It was it was called the Columns Affair. And the, the papers like magically disappeared. And it was essentially just a way for them later, uh, the theosophists to have good standing to say, you know, oh, well, their claims that she was a fraud was really, uh, you know, not, it, it was on a technicality and, you know, that they would have claims to be able to come back and defend. Um, but now we have these, uh, you know, it's become very popularized throughout the, the New Age movement. And these people who are, you know, thought leaders, influencers, uh, daytime television people like Oprah have popularized them throughout the past several decades. And these people are very deceptive. And I think that's why it's so important for people to understand what's going on, because a lot of people are seeing uh, a lot of very prominent influencers and media figures who are uh, converting to to Christianity right now. And this is not to wish ill on them. This is not to, you know, say that I'm not cheering for people if they found, a, a, you know, a belief system that works for them. Uh, you know, of course, I, I support that. I want that for everyone. Uh, but I believe in freedom of consciousness. And, you know, right now we still have freedom of consciousness. However, these people really want to take that away. And they're very deceptive about it. They're doing it under the guise of things like Christ consciousness, which is right out of Blavatsky's writing. This is not uh, Christ as in the uh, biblical Christ. They believe Christ was an ascended master. And so he is just, you know, another one of these channeled ascended masters that they're um, talking. So when they say Christ consciousness, that's what they mean. And the, this has become, you know, so a lot of these media figures, a lot of these uh, popular influencers are now speaking this language. And it is very deceptive. And I, I, I do think that their goal is to try and usher in this one world religion. And they talk about, so when they talk about this spiral, the top of the spiral is this superhuman organism. So it's this uh, humanity versus individual humans. They claim that they are anti-Darwinian. And really, I think they're just neo-Darwinian. They have cherry-picked and taken aspects of evolution that they like and that works for their new religion. Uh, but what they oppose is the part of uh, natural selection that breeds competition because they say that places too much value on the individual and we, and that has hurt us tremendously and that will be the end of humanity as a species as a species and if we want humanity to evolve we need to favor cooperation and collaboration and essentially the collective conscious um that's really and of course what is that consciousness that is the internet and what did we talk about the last time i was here the ai world society and that's really what they're priming all of this for and i think we also talked about tavistock tavistock's very involved in all of this there's a a document it's called politics three from abraham maslow it was from his unfinished works and they they compiled it in the early 2000s and they published it and he talks about a lot of these concepts that really paved the way for, you know, so he talked about self-actualization and we think of self-actualization in terms of the individual, but in his document, he makes it very clear that for politics, we really need this to be a collective self-actualization. And that is what politics three is all about, so. This is Johnny Fedmore on today's news talk, TNT. TNT.